Um, this is Aaron Saunders. This is the next video in a series of videos um, that I'm going to do talking about building applications in React uh, JS using an Ionic framework. Um, the previous video we went over kind of the setup for this basic tab application and what we want to do now in this tab application is we want to answer the famous question of how do I manage state between two tabs. So one of the ways we're going to show right now is um, using the React uh, context API. So we are going to um, start by adding a new file to our project. Um, let's um, and please um, be patient with me for my typing. It's not I'm not the best typist. So here we go. We have my okay. I'm going to cut and paste a little bit of code here to kind of speed this up because I don't like to have really long videos. I think people kind of get bored and just kind of hop around anyway. Um, and also, um, we are using TypeScript in this. So um, here we go. So first of all, obviously, we need to import React. Um, uh, the next thing that we need to do is actually create the context. And so you do that using React. You call create context. Since since I don't really want to get too deep into TypeScript right now, I'm gonna you're gonna see I'm using a lot of any here. So for all the people that are about to comment about why using any, why using any. I'm trying to give a gentle introduction into how to utilize this, and sometimes um, getting caught up in a TypeScript can make it a lot harder to um, get the value that we're trying to get. So um, what we need to do next is we need to create a provider. So the provider is how you're going to actually, um, actually we're going to wrap the whole application with the provider, and then when we need access to the context, we're going to use a lovely React hook that will allow us to get the context and then get the values and the functions or whatever we want out of the context and utilize them anywhere in the uh, tree. So first, let's start with um, creating our provider. So um, this is our provider. And we're going to just start at the top and keep this real simple. Um, uh, do, 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 what is that? Okay. Yeah, as I add the rest of the code, we'll, 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 um, we, we will get this cleaned up. So let's, I think it is, yeah, it's looking for returns. Let's put the return in now to see if we can get um, some of these kind of like weird curly things to go away to make it easier to read the code. All right, now it's just complaining about using these, but we'll get to them later. So in this provider, like I said, there's two things we're, we're eh, there's two things we're working on here. We are... We have the shared value that we want access to on both pages, and then we have a function that we're going to utilize. Um, I keep saying pages. We have this function we're going to utilize in each tab that's going to allow you to update this value. Um, and then since this is reactive here with the use state, um, you will see the changes happen, as I like to say, automatically. So what we're keeping track of here is what the value is and who changed it. And what will happen is in the application, I'm going to assign the name of the tab that changed the value. So you'll know when I'm in tab 2, when I click the button, I change the tab and go to tab 1, you'll know that tab 2 made the change. Pretty straightforward, but it can, the basic concept can be utilized to do a lot of different things. So next is the actual uh, state information that we are keeping track of here. Um, please apologize me for my formatting. I'm not like a big key person. So here we have what our state is. And then the last thing you really want to do is um, you want to wrap the whole thing in your provider. So this, so what we get here is something looks like this. So what this is saying is that, oh, and then the last thing is I want to export default by context so I can get access to my context anywhere. So I'll put this down here. So what really what this is saying is. I'm going to create this context. Um, the initial value of this context is going to be state, which is here, which is the shared value. And then I also have the other part of the context is this function called set shared state. And we're initializing my state to this value. Um, so that's this. This guy is this value. All right. And we are returning this default context, um, which we are going to utilize later in the application to get access to the state that's in here. Right? And so the next step here is about wrapping 
your whole application with this provider at the top level of the tree so that it can get access to the um, context when you need it. So let's start here. And so to do that, we need to go into uh, our, um, excuse me, into our app, our app page, our app TSX. So let's find our way over to our app TSX, tab, tab, app TSX. Okay. And then we're going to import this from the file that I created, which is in my context. Right? So, all right. Um, and as I said, I'm going to wrap just the parts that need it. So, and, and we'll move it later if, uh, if we run into problems. The provider. So we're going to wrap this guy. And then we're going to go, so I'm inside of router outlet. We're going to go like this. And, okay, so we have our components wrapped, um, which is the requirement. And so, very good there. And then, then the next part is to um, get access to the values. No, we don't, actually we don't need the values inside of here. We need the values inside of our tab. So let's get close this join out. And let's just start off with, let's go to tab one. And so remember I said we have an amazing hook that we can use to get access to the information that we need. So let's start to use it. So we can get the app context. And so we will import the app context uh, from our context file that we had created. So let's do this. Uh, import app context. Uh -huh. oh, I don't need this. The yeah, app context is default. And so now I have the app context, and it's inside of here. We can use the. Actually, this does not belong here. This belongs in here. That's better. So this is the hook that's going to give us access access to that context that we need. So now that we have the context that we need, let's just um, let's start by just rendering the value here. So let's just do this. See if it will compile, even though I'm not using everything. Well, I don't need a lot. I just need to share value. So let's take the share value and drop share value here. Um, so let's go back to tab one. Uh, you don't do it like that. You gotta do this. Uh, uh, hmm. I've got my shared value has um, two things in it. So let's do this. Let's just do some stringify. My shared value, so we can see everything that's in it. All right, so there we go. Let's, um, I have my initial value changed by admin. So now I have access to the value from my context, which is exactly what I wanted to. So it's, for lack of a better word, kind of like a access to global variable that exists inside the context, and the context is shared. And to prove that it's shared, we do the next step, which is we're going to utilize this set shared value here. And so what we want to do is we want to say, when I change the value here, um, call the function to context, update the context. And like I said, to save some time here, let's just do our magic cut and paste. So we have our function that we want to call here. When you click the button, and what we're saying is that when you click the button, we want to set the shared value. We're going to use the current date time. And we're going to indicate that it got changed in tab one. And then what we're going to do on this reset value, let's just take the same function and we're just going to clean it up a bit. So it's a reset, we're just going to set everything back to null. So let's format this too. So change by tab one, but we're going to set the value back to null. So that's what reset does. So let's clean this up a bit. Everything's straight.
So we can just test. So see, so my value got back to null. It was changed by tab. Update the value. We're seeing the time. See, time changing, time changing, time changing. Well, let's go to tab two. We got nothing to tab two. But let's quickly just um, steal some code. So we'll take the update value here from this button, and we'll go over to tab two, and we will change update value. Um, but what we're going to do is here we're going to say it was changed by tab two. And let's add the, let's save us all some time and just add the hook that gives us access to the context. Tab two. Um, so we got a history hook, and now we got a context hook. And then let's, here's my helper going to help me to import my context. No, so let's go back here, and copy my context. Tab two, context. I have access to the context. Um, and, oh, I forgot, we want to actually display what the value is here. So let's take this guy, bring it over to tab two, and show what our value is. Okay, so tab one, tab two. Mm, I think something died. Tab two. All right, tab one. So, um, so I got I I got to wrap the whole joint. So I got this whole thing wrapped right from the top to the bottom. All right, let's close this and get back to where we were. So, um, I can reset my value to null. I can update my value. Takes the current timestamp. See, let's just I look at the last couple of digits. So you can see we have this three four four nine at the end there. I switch over to tab two. I have three four four nine. Um, Go to my tab two detail page, come back. Let's go to tab two detail. Let's switch over to this page. Let's update my value. It's 1900. Go back to tab two, go back. So I have my value. So what the provider has done is it, it wrapped every, it wrapped the whole application um, with my context and then using my context, which let's quickly go back to that. It has these, uh, this, these shared values that is part of my state that I've added to my context provider, um, which then allows me to, to, let's just go to tab two, to use this use context hook to get access to my context. And in my context, in this scenario, I want both the value and a function to modify the value. And so I can make these changes. And when I make these changes, it updates the context so that any place that needs the updated value, so back here at tab one, it wants the value, it can pull it out of the context and it gets the updated value. So once again, that's a way to share value um, between two tabs, or as, as, the, as the big boys say, that's a way to manage state between two tabs in your application. Um, thanks for following along. Uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, stay tuned because the next, the next video we will move into I'm modifying my context API to actually manage my authentication state. So we're going to manage authentication state. And then the next thing we are also going to do is we're going to show how managing the authentication state, you can handle that scenario where when the app starts up, there's a login screen that's on top of all of this. And then after the user authenticates, they see the tab screen. And then after they log out, we switch back to the set of routes that excludes the login screen and the logout screen. Um, so that's that's a pattern that you're going to see often, and that's kind of what the purpose of this is, is to show you kind of these small sample applications that demonstrate the functionality that you need to build something amazing. So thanks for following. Please like and subscribe. This is Aaron Saunders. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Have a good one.